Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the movies conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn to say phrases like, does this have subtitles? When does the movie start? And much more. Second, the how to talk about your feelings PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 words and phrases for feelings with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review it on any device. Third, 30 must know opposite adjectives. Learn how to say young and old, hot and cold, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about people's appearances? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn to describe others with words like tall, short, muscular, and much more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to give your phone number. This is Mark Lee, and he's at City Hall registering his address. The civil servant who is helping him says, Your phone number, please. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Note the civil servant in this conversation uses formal French. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Once more with the English translation. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Your phone number, please. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06. 00 34 57 00 My phone number is 06 00 34 57 00 Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the civil servant says Your phone number, please? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Let's start with Numéro de téléphone Meaning phone number Numéro de téléphone First is Numéro Number Numéro Numéro In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Numéro is masculine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Next is de of in this context. De de Last is téléphone phone téléphone téléphone Note téléphone Translates as telephone or phone. We'll use the abbreviated version, phone, as this will include various kinds of phones, including mobile phones, landlines, and so forth. Together, it's... Numéro de téléphone. This literally means number of telephone, or telephone's number, but it translates as telephone number or phone number. Numéro de téléphone. Before this is... Votre, meaning your, in this formal context. Votre, votre. Note. Votre. Fundamentally means your, when referring to more than one person. 
but it's also a formal way to say your when speaking to someone directly using formal French. Now, you might be more familiar with Ton An informal word for your, as in Ton numéro de téléphone Your phone number As this is a city office setting, the formal form Votre is more appropriate. Altogether, Votre numéro de téléphone Your phone number Votre numéro de téléphone Last is S'il vous plaît Meaning please S'il vous plaît S'il vous plaît Altogether, it's Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît Your phone number, please votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Remember this request. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember Mark's response? My phone number is 06-00-34-5700. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Do you remember the phrase for phone number? Numéro de téléphone. Phone number. Numéro de téléphone. Before this is the word. Mon. My. Mon. Mon. In this sentence. Mon is masculine and singular to agree with numéro Altogether it's mon numéro de téléphone my phone number mon numéro de téléphone Next is est is as in my phone number is est 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 is from the verb être Meaning to be. Être. Together it's. Mon numéro de téléphone est. My phone number is. Mon numéro de téléphone est. Next is. Le. Think of it like the in English. Le. Le. Here. Le. Is also masculine singular to agree with. Numéro. Note, in this sentence, the article le does not have a corresponding English translation. Next is Mark's phone number. 06-00-34-57-00 Note how Mark says his phone number. When giving your number in French, include a slight pause after each group of two numbers. Altogether, it's Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. My phone number is 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 5, 7, 0, 0. The pattern is Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. My phone number is phone number. Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. To use this pattern, simply replace the phone number placeholder with your phone number. Imagine your phone number is 
1-1-2-2-3-3-4-4. Say, my phone number is 0011223344. Ready? Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0011223344. My phone number is 0011223344. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0011223344. In France, all numbers start with zero, with the exception of emergency services. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 11 22 33 44. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 9 9 8 8 7 7 6 6. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 7 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2. 00 01 1 0 1 0 Zero Did you notice how I omitted? Mon numéro de téléphone est le... Zero 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 un un zero un zero zero deux. Zero 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 one one zero one zero zero two. When directly responding to a request, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply giving your phone number, there is no need to say, Mon numéro de téléphone est le... My phone number is... The pattern is... Phone number. You should be aware of this shortcut, but for this lesson, we'll use the sentence pattern... Mon numéro de téléphone est le... Phone number. My phone number is phone number. Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say phone? Téléphone. Téléphone. And how to say number? Numéro. Numéro. Do you remember how to say phone number? Numéro de téléphone. Numéro de téléphone. And how to say my phone number? Mon numéro de téléphone. Mon numéro de téléphone. Do you remember how to say my phone number is? Mon numéro de téléphone est. Mon numéro de téléphone est. Do you remember how Mark says, My phone number is 06-00-34-5700. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 
0-0. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06-00-34-57-00. Do you remember the formal way to say your phone number? Votre numéro de téléphone. Votre numéro de téléphone. And how to say please? S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Do you remember how the civil servant says, your phone number, please? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Let's practice. Imagine your Karen Lee. And your phone number is 08 72 36 90 66. Respond to the civil servant's request. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 8 7 2 3 6 9 0 6 6. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 8 7 2 3 6 9 0 6. Mon numéro de téléphone est le zéro huit sept deux trois six neuf zéro six. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Lee and your phone number is 01 10 10 02 03. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Justine Jerome and your phone number is 00 99 88 77 66. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66.
mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to give your phone number in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about your family. This is Ben Lee, and he's at a coffee shop with his classmate, Justine Jerome. Ben is showing her some pictures. She points to one of them and asks, Is this your family? Est ta famille? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Once more with the English translation. Est ta famille? Is this your family? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Yes, this is my father, my mother my sister, and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Justine asks, Is this your family? Est ta famille? Let's start with the word Famille Family Famille. Famille. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Famille. Is feminine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before. Famille. Is. Ta. Meaning your. Ta. 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 Is feminine and singular to agree with famille. Together, it's ta famille. Your family. Ta famille. Moving to the start of the sentence, eh. is. Eh. Eh. Note. Eh. Is from the verb être. Meaning to be. Être. Next is ce, this, ce, ce. Together it's s, meaning is this, s. Notice the word order when asking a question. E, is, followed by ce, this. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject in this case. Note the pronunciation of S. S. It's pronounced as one sound. S. Is this S. Altogether, it's Est ta famille? Is this your family? Est ta famille? Note the rising intonation of the sentence to indicate that it's a question. Est ta famille? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Ben says, Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister, and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. This starts with the expression Oui. Meaning yes. Oui. Oui. 
It answers Justine's yes or no question. Is this your family? Est ta famille? After this, Ben points to the picture and says, C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. First is, C'est. Meaning, this is. C'est. C'est. Note. C'est. Is contracted with. Est. To form. C'est. After this is. Mon père. My father. Mon père. Père. Father. Père. Père. Mon. My. Mon. Mon. Is masculine and singular to agree with. Père. Mon père. Next is. Ma mère. My mother. Ma mère. Mère. Mother. Mère. Mère. Ma. My. Ma. Ma. Is feminine and singular to agree with. Mère. Ma mère. After this is. Ma sœur. My sister. Ma sœur. Sœur. Sister. Sœur. Sœur. Ma. My. Ma. Is feminine and singular to agree with. Sœur. Ma sœur. Next is. Et. And. Et. Et. And last is moi, me, moi, moi. All together. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. The pattern is. C'est family member, family member, family member, et moi. This is family member, family member, family member, and me. To use this pattern, simply replace the family member placeholder with the appropriate word for my and members of your family. Remember that the word for my will be mon when your family member is male and ma. When your family member is female. Imagine your family members are your father, your mother, your brother, and you. Frère. Is brother. Frère. 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 Is masculine and singular. Therefore, my brother is. Mon frère. Mon frère. Say. This is my father, my mother, my brother, and me. Ready? C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère, et moi. This is my father, my mother, my brother, and me. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère, et moi. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. Mes parents et moi. Mes parents et moi. Did you notice how I replaced mon père, ma mère, with 
Mes parents Mes parents et moi My parents and me The phrase Mes parents means my parents Mes parents Remember in French all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural Parents is masculine and plural a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence Parents 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 Before this is mais my mais mais is masculine and plural to agree with parents mes parents et moi my parents and me let's review respond to the prompts by speaking aloud then repeat after me focusing on pronunciation ready Do you remember how to say yes? Oui. Oui. And how to say me? Moi. Moi. Do you remember how to say and? Et. Et. Do you remember how to say sister? Sœur. Sœur. And how to say my sister? Ma sœur. Ma sœur. Do you remember how to say mother? Mère. Mère. And how to say my mother? Ma mère. Ma mère. Do you remember how to say father? Père. Père. And how to say my father? Mon père. Mon père. Do you remember how Ben says? Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister, and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Do you remember how to say family? Famille. Famille. And how to say your family? Ta famille. Ta famille. Do you remember how Justine asks, Is this your family? Est-ce ta famille? Est-ce ta famille? Do you remember how to say brother? Frère. Frère. And how to say my brother? Mon frère. Mon frère. Let's practice. 
Imagine you're Sasha, Ben's younger sister. Respond to your friend's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben's classmate, Noé Najar. You have a father, mother, and sister. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben's classmate and language exchange partner, Justine Jerome. You have a father, mother, sister, and brother. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now, you know how to talk about your own family in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family from a parent's perspective. This is Karen Lee, and she's studying with her French teacher, Sadia Simon. The teacher notices a picture on Karen's computer and asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Note, the teacher uses formal French. Ready? Est-ce votre famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Once more with the English translation. Est-ce votre famille? Is this your family? Oui. C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the teacher asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Let's start with the word famille. Family. 
famille. Famille. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Famille is feminine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before this is votre, meaning your when addressing one person in a formal context. Votre. Votre. Note. Votre. Fundamentally means your when addressing more than one person. But it's also a formal way to say your when speaking to one person directly using formal French. Now, you might be more familiar with ta. An informal word for your, as in ta famille. Your family. As this is a conversation between two adults who don't know each other very well, the formal form votre is more appropriate. Moving to the start of the sentence, est is est 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 is from the verb être to be être. Next is ce this ce ce together it's s meaning is this s notice the word order when asking a question e is followed by ce this when this inverted word order occurs in french there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject in this case. S. Is this? S. Altogether, it's. Est-ce votre famille? Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Note the rising intonation of the sentence to indicate that it's a question. Est-ce votre famille? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter, and me. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille, et moi. This starts with the expression, Oui. Meaning, yes. Oui. Oui. It answers the teacher's yes or no question. Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? After this, Karen points to the picture and says, C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. First is, C'est. Meaning, this is. C'est, c'est. Note. Ce is contracted with est to form c'est. After this is mon mari, my husband, mon mari, mari, husband, mari, mari, mon, my. Mon. Mon is masculine and singular to agree with mari. Mon mari. Next is mon fils. My son. Mon fils. Fils. Son. Fils. Fils. Mon. My. Mon is masculine and singular to agree with fils. Mon fils. After this is ma fille. My daughter. Ma fille. Fille. Daughter. Fille. Fille. Ma. My. Ma. Ma is feminine and singular to agree with fille. 
Ma fille. Next is. Et. And. Et. Et. And last is. Moi. Me. Moi. Moi. All together. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter and me. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. The pattern is C'est family member, family member, family member et moi. This is family member, family member, family member and me. To use this pattern, simply replace the family member placeholder with the appropriate word for my and members of your family. Remember that the word for my will be mon when your family member is male and Ma. When your family member is female. Imagine your family members are your wife, your son, your daughter, and you. Femme. Is wife. Femme. 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 Is feminine and singular. Therefore, my wife is. Ma femme. Ma femme. Say. This is my wife. My son, my daughter, and me. Ready? C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille, et moi. This is my wife, my son, my daughter, and me. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille, et moi. In French, the femme can mean both wife and woman. The intended meaning is understood through the context of usage. In this lesson, we only use the word femme as wife. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. C'est mon mari. Mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. Did you notice how the last speaker says the number of sons? C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. This is my husband, my two sons, and me. Mes deux fils. My two sons. Mes deux fils. Let's start with fils. Sons. In this case, fils. Earlier in the lesson, fils. Translated as son. In this case, fils. Translates as sons, as there are two sons. De fils. Note the pronunciation and spelling of fils is the same whether it is plural or singular. Here, fils is masculine and plural, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before this is de, two, de, de, together, de fils, two sons, 
deux fils. Before this is mais my mais 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 is masculine and plural to agree with fils together mes deux fils my two sons mes deux fils to say my two daughters mes deux filles my two daughters mes deux filles fille daughters fille fille is the plural form of fille daughter fille note the pronunciation of the singular and the plural is the same you should be aware of the plural form but we'll use the singular nouns in this lesson Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? Oui. Oui. And how to say me? Moi. Moi. Do you remember how to say and? Et. Et. And how to say daughter? Fille. Fille. Do you remember how to say my daughter? Ma fille. Ma fille. And how to say son? Fils. Fils. Do you remember how to say my son? Mon fils. Mon fils. And how to say husband? Marie, Marie. Do you remember how to say my husband? Mon mari, mon mari. Do you remember how Karen says, yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter, and me? Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Do you remember how to say family? Famille. Famille. And the formal way to say your family? Votre famille. Votre famille. And do you remember how Sadia Simon asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Est-ce votre famille? Do you remember how to say wife? Femme. Femme. And how to say my wife? Ma femme. Ma femme. Let's practice. Imagine your Marx colleague, Paul Pouty. You have a wife and a daughter. Respond to Mark's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? 
Est-ce ta famille Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Let's try another. This is Mark's boss, Denise Dumont. You have a husband, a daughter, and a son. Ready? Est-ce votre famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui. C'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark's friend, Valerie Villiome. You have a husband and a son. Ready? Est-ce ta famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Did you notice how Mark uses ta famille when asking about his friends and colleagues' families? Est ta famille? Is this your family? In less formal situations, like speaking with a friend or close colleague, the less formal ta, as in ta famille, is more appropriate. Ta, your, ta, ta. Note, ta is feminine and singular to agree with famille. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try it any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now, you know how to talk about your family in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous. Je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to greet someone at different times of the day. This is Sadia Simone, the Lee family's French teacher. Her schedule for the day is Mark Lee at 9 a.m., Karen Lee at 12 p.m., Ben Lee at 6 p.m. Listen to the greeting exchange between the three pairs. Pay attention to the time of day. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, Ben. Once more with the English translation. Bonjour, Madame Simon. 
Good morning, Miss Simone. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, Ben. Good evening, Ben. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. In the first conversation, do you remember how Mark says, Good morning, Miss Simone. Bonjour, Madame Simon. First is, Bonjour. Which literally means, good day, but translates as, good morning, in this context. Bonjour. Bonjour. Note. Bonjour. Is a flexible greeting that can be used to mean, good morning, good afternoon, or even just hello. You can use it all day until the evening. Next is... Madame. Miss. Madame. Madame. This is an honorific used for women. Finally, the teacher's family name, Simone. Simon. 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 Together it's... Madame Simon. Miss Simon. Madame Simon. All together it's... Bonjour, Madame Simon. Good morning, Miss Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. When including a person's name in a greeting, it's more common to say the person's name after the greeting. Note, using a person's family name in a greeting may come across as more formal. Do you remember the teacher's response? Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. First is... Bonjour. Good morning, in this context. Bonjour. Next... Monsieur. Mister. Monsieur. Monsieur. This is an honorific used for men. Finally, Mark's family name. Lee. Pronounced in French. Lee. 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 Altogether, it's... Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Note this exchange is formal. In the second conversation, which takes place at noon, do you remember how Karen says, hello? Hint, it's the same greeting as the one used in the morning. Bonjour. Note that Karen's greeting is slightly less formal, as she doesn't say the teacher's name. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. The teacher's response is the same. Bonjour. This can translate as hello or good afternoon. Bonjour. Is a common way to greet people during the day. You can use it in formal and less formal situations. In the third conversation, which takes place in the evening at 6 p.m., do you remember how Ben says, Good evening, teacher? Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir is a common way to greet people during the evening and at night, in formal and less formal situations. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Next is... Professeur. This is the title meaning teacher in this case. Professeur. Professeur. In French, 
All nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Professeur is feminine and singular. Altogether, it's Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Do you remember the teacher's response? Good evening, Ben. Bonsoir, Ben. First is Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Next is Ben's name pronounced in French. Ben. 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 Together it's Bonsoir, Ben. Good evening, Ben. Bonsoir, Ben. Note that the teacher addresses Ben by his first name, as he is younger. This makes the greeting sound more informal. Let's look at the greetings once more. Listen and repeat or speak along with me. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Salut. Salut. Did you notice the last greeting? Salut. In informal situations, you can use the greeting Salut. Hi. Salut. Salut. Salut is a common greeting in French. However, it's only suitable for informal situations, such as when greeting friends. It translates as hi or hello, but it can also mean goodbye. Because of this, you can use Salut both when meeting and parting. Let's review the key vocabulary. Professeur. Teacher. Professeur. 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 Teacher. Professeur. Professeur. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how Mark says, Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour. Do you remember how Mark says, Good morning, Miss Simon? Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Do you remember how Karen says hello? Bonjour. Bonjour. And how to say good evening? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Do you remember how Ben says, Good evening, teacher? Use the feminine version of teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben Lee. 
and you're attending your morning class. Respond by saying, good morning. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour. Listen again and repeat. Bonjour. Bonjour. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're attending your afternoon class. Respond by saying, Hello, Miss Simone. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Listen again and repeat. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Karen Lee and you meet your neighbor in the evening. Respond by saying, Good evening. Ready? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Listen again and repeat. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try it anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to use basic greetings in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Helicopter. 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 Le président voyage en hélicoptère. The president travels by helicopter. Le président voyage en hélicoptère. Noir. Black. Noir, noir, black. Il porte un pantalon noir. He is wearing black pants. Il porte un pantalon noir. Brun, brown, brun, brun, brown. Elle a les cheveux bruns. She has brown hair. Elle a les cheveux bruns. Gris. Gray. Gris. Gris. Gray. L'éléphant est gris. The elephant is gray. L'éléphant est gris. Se reposer. Rest. Se reposer. Se reposer. Rest. Cette ville est un lieu idéal pour se reposer. This city is an ideal place to rest. Cette ville est un lieu idéal pour se reposer. Entendre. Hear. Entendre. Entendre. Hear. On pouvait entendre une goutte tomber. You could hear a drop fall. On pouvait entendre une goutte tomber. Veux. Want. Veux. Veux. Want. Arrête de parler. Je veux écouter le film. Stop talking. I want to watch the movie. Arrête de parler, je veux écouter le film. 
dégoûtant, disgusting, dégoûtant, dégoûtant, disgusting. L'homme mange un apéritif dégoûtant. The man is eating a disgusting snack. L'homme mange un apéritif dégoûtant. 11 11 11 11 11 Ce grand magasin a 11 étages. The department store has 11 floors. Ce grand magasin a 11 étages. 12 12 12 12 12 Mon numéro de compte bancaire contient 12 chiffres. My bank account numbers contains 12 digits. Mon numéro de compte bancaire contient 12 chiffres. 13 13 13 13 13. Il a 13 ans. He is 13 years old. Il a 13 ans. Mail. Email. Mail. Mail. Email. J'envoie un mail à Cécile. I'm sending an email to Cécile. J'envoie un mail à Cécile. Téléphone portable. Cellular phone. Téléphone portable. Téléphone portable. Cellular phone. La femme écrivait un message sur son téléphone portable. The woman texted on her cellular phone. La femme écrivait un message sur son téléphone portable. SMS Text message SMS SMS Text message Écrire un SMS Type a text message Écrire un SMS Bouche Mouse. Bouche. Bouche. Mouse. Avoir une grande bouche. Having a big mouse. Avoir une grande bouche. Joue. Cheek. Joue. Joue. Cheek. Elle se demande pourquoi il a du rouge à lèvres sur la joue. She wonders why he has lipstick on his cheek. Elle se demande pourquoi il a du rouge à lèvres sur la joue. Nez. Nose. Nez. Nez. Nose. Quand il fait froid, votre nez devient rouge. When it's cold, your nose gets red. Quand il fait froid, votre nez devient rouge. Cahier Notebook Cahier Cahier Notebook J'achète mes cahiers en papeterie. I buy my notebooks at the stationery shop. J'achète mes cahiers en papeterie. Crayon Pencil Crayon, crayon, pencil. Elle tient son crayon dans la mauvaise main. She holds her pencil in the wrong hand. Elle tient son crayon dans la mauvaise main. Gomme, eraser. Gomme, gomme, eraser. Puis-je utiliser votre gomme? Can I use your eraser? Puis-je utiliser votre gomme? Blanc. White. 
blanc, blanc, white. Blanche Neige est une princesse. Snow White is a princess. Blanche Neige est une princesse. Rouge, red, rouge, rouge, red. Arrête-toi au feu rouge. Stop at the red light. Arrête-toi au feu rouge. Vert, green, vert, vert, green. La forêt est très verte cet été. The forest is very green in the summer. La forêt est très verte cet été. Finir. Finish. Finir. Finir. Finish. Ils espèrent finir demain. They hope to finish tomorrow. Ils espèrent finir demain. Commencer. Start. Commencer. Commencer. Start. Je ne peux pas commencer la journée sans café. I can't start the day without coffee. Je ne peux pas commencer la journée sans café. Devenir. Become. Devenir. Devenir. Become. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. My cousin wants to become a pilot. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. Ma fille a 14 ans. My daughter is 14 years old. Ma fille a 14 ans. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. La ville est à 15 km. The city is at 15 km. La ville est à 15 km. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16 chaises sèches. 16 chairs are drying. 16 chaises sèches. Téléphone. 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 Mon téléphone marche bien. My téléphone works well. Mon téléphone marche bien. Oeil. Aïe. Oeil. Oeil. Aïe. Son œil est ouvert. His eye is open. Son œil est ouvert. Dent. Tis. Dent. Dent. Tis. Se brosser les dents. To brush your teeth. Se brosser les dents. Lèvres. Lip. Lèvres. Lèvres. Lip. Avoir les lèvres rouges. Having red lips. Avoir les lèvres rouges. Photocopieuse. Copy machine. Photocopieuse. Photocopieuse. Copy machine. La photocopieuse est cassée. The copy machine is broken. La photocopieuse est cassée. Bureau. Desk. Bureau. Bureau. Desk. 
Le bureau est en bois. The desk is made of wood. Le bureau est en bois. Livre. Book. Livre. Livre. Book. Ce livre est en stock. This book is in stock. Ce livre est en stock. Stylo. Pen. Stylo. Stylo. Pen. C'est ton stylo? Is this your pen? C'est ton stylo? Post. Post office. Post. Post. Post office. Mon bureau est près de la poste. My office is next to the post office. Mon bureau est près de la poste. Bibliothèque. Library. Bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. Library. Je révise à la bibliothèque. I study at the library. Je révise à la bibliothèque. Supermarché. Supermarket. Supermarché. Supermarché. Supermarket. J'ai fait des courses au supermarché. I shopped at the supermarket. J'ai fait des courses au supermarché. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn, one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight-hour day and you want to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. 
And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you. And you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time, bye. Thank you.
what are some surefire ways to stay motivated when you're learning a language? In this video, we're going to talk about 10 surefire ways to stay motivated and stay on track. All right, we asked our Premium and Premium Plus members for their tested techniques. You'll find out what worked for them. Number one, you must see your progress. In other words, you have to see it to believe it. There's nothing better than seeing your results firsthand. It's like seeing muscles in the mirror after working out. How do you do this with language? In order to see it, you have to start measuring it first. And you can do that with the dashboard on our website. With the dashboard, you can see how many lessons and how much of the language you've mastered so far. So review the progress you've made with the dashboard on the site. Number two, use the Daily Dose of Language app. With this, you get free daily mini lessons, but that's not all. This app keeps you on track because it actually sends you daily reminders. If you need that extra push or reminder, this app does it for you. And the daily dose lessons are quick and easy. They take just one minute of your time. Number three, learn with somebody better than you. A tutor, a friend, and you can even learn with your own teacher with a Premium Plus subscription. Simply having someone better than you by your side is enough to help you improve and motivate you. It's like having a coach. Number four, set a small, measurable goal. For example, finish 10 lessons in one week or learn 20 words in a week. Most people give up because they have a vague goal, like I wanna be fluent, that they don't know how to reach. But if you aim small and make it measurable, you'll have a much better chance of reaching it. Your goal is to learn 20 words, and you know 17 already. Because you know how close you are, you're more motivated to close the gap and reach your goal. Number five, watch movies and shows in your target language. First of all, we recommend this because it's fun. But more importantly, when you understand what you hear, it's a clear sign of progress and you'll feel good about it. Number six, listen to music in your target language. Music is enjoyable, and if you make it part of your routine, you're giving yourself a nice break in between lessons, but you're still immersing yourself in the language. So if you enjoy this routine, you're more likely to stay motivated. Number seven, do the lessons that you enjoy. Just like with music, if you enjoy our audio and video lessons, then stick with them. If you have any favorite lessons, remember you can always download them to your device and review them as much as you want. They're yours to keep. Number eight, understand that language learning is a marathon. Learning a new language is not a sprint. Most people think they can study for hours and suddenly get better. But when they realize that it takes time, this can hurt their motivation. So understand that it's a marathon. Remember that it's better to study for a few minutes every day than pulling a five hour cram session that will burn you out. Number nine, keep the big goal in mind. Imagine yourself being fluent. Small, measurable goals are definitely important, but when you just don't feel like learning, which is completely natural, by the way, remember the big goal. Having the big picture in mind will remind you of what's important and put you back on track. Number 10, invest in the language. Make a commitment. Whether you buy a book or a subscription, enroll in a class, or join a study group, by investing and making a commitment, you're much more likely to go through with it. You've paid for it, so you value it more. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Plus, other people expect you to show up. This can be extremely helpful when working towards your language goals. And that's it. There are so many ways to keep yourself motivated. Do you have a favorite way? Leave us a comment and let us know. So to make sure you stay motivated in your studies, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak and understand more of your target language? You'll need to know more words and phrases to really make new conversations and ultimately connections. In this video, you'll discover six ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary lists. Here's what makes this study tool so powerful. This is your free library of vocab and phrase lessons. You can learn words and phrases for current events like Halloween or New Year's. There are also many useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. In other words, you learn phrases that you wouldn't normally find in textbooks. 
And if you want to learn extra fast, you can use the slideshow tool. Just tap on or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And yes, these vocab lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is through conversations. You get to hear how the words are used. So in every lesson dialogue, you'll come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. So when you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll know them all. Number three, learn with our 2,000 most common words list. Here's a question for you. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000? 5,000? Actually, language experts say you need only about 1,500 to reach conversational fluency. And with this study tool, the 2,000 most common words list, you get the words you need for conversational fluency right up front. That's what makes this study tool so powerful. It's all here for you. And they're broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, and months. Now, 2,000 is quite a lot to learn. Do you have to learn it all? Well, you don't have to learn it all at once. You can go category by category. You can also start with the top 100 words, then move on to the top 200, 300, and so on until you get to 2,000. So if you're an absolute beginner, you can start with the top 100 words. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to the next category. You can also use other study tools to learn these words faster, right? Such as number four, study with spaced repetition flashcards. Now, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. Picture this. Think of these as a teacher inside of your computer who quizzes you and sorts the words for you. So words that you struggle with, you'll be quizzed on more and more, and words that you know, you'll see less and less. So they display the words as needed, so you never forget them. In every session, they'll refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new ones. That's exactly how our smart flashcards work. And because you get drilled on the words you struggle with, you have no choice but to master them and improve. You have no choice but to succeed. You can also study the words from your lessons and vocab lists with the very same flashcard tool. Number five, create printable word lists with the word bank. The word bank is a study tool that lets you save words and phrases from lessons and vocab lists. Think of it as your extended brain. If you come across a new word that you want to review later, you can save it to the word bank. But the word bank also lets you print out your word lists. So click on the printer friendly option inside word bank and print out your collection of words. You can use that sheet for writing practice. Number six, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow it, meaning listen to the audio pronunciation and say it out loud. You should do this because it's the actual practice that gets you to remember it. So say it, write it, listen to it again. Doing this will help lock the words into your memory. So if you wanna take advantage of any of these tools for yourself, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time, bye. Are you studying a language but starting to lose motivation? In this video, we're gonna talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. After six months to a year of studying a language, you might be feeling like you're losing a little bit of steam. Maybe you started out strong and now you're feeling a bit low. Maybe you aren't seeing the results you wanted or you think your efforts aren't paying off. But the reason for that might not have anything to do with your studies. It might be more an issue about your reviewing and your goal setting. One, why you should review your past language goals. When you set goals, do you ever go back to review your progress? It can be a reminder of how far you've come and help you keep your motivation up. Let's say you started learning a language and you've been at it for a few months. In month one, you're excited and motivated. In month two, you're still going at it, but maybe the motivation is not as strong and you wanna make sure that you don't fall off, unfortunately, as most people do. So you work hard to keep at it. 
By month three, you're kind of on autopilot and learning with whatever has been working for you. That sounds like a good place to be, cruising on autopilot. Well, it may seem like a good place to be, but the problem is by month four, five, or six, if you've been coasting along for too long and haven't had any significant improvements, you may start wondering if you're actually learning or if you'll ever master the language. You might start losing motivation, and worse, you might even quit. If you're learning by yourself, it's hard, and if you're not tracking your progress, by month four or five, you might realize that the textbook you've been using isn't helping you increase your fluency. You might think you're going nowhere. So the reason to review is to check your progress. Maybe you can speak none of your target language in month one, but at the end of month three, you can speak three minutes. So that's some progress. And if you're at eight minutes now, for example, then you can definitely say that you've improved since the start. It's good for motivation, just knowing that you got a return on your time investment. So reviewing is good for progress and motivation. Also, it's natural to lose motivation with anything you're trying to learn or do. So it's something you need to keep up, something you need to keep in mind. What do you do when your motivation dips? You can stop, take some time to review and reflect. Is your motivation dipping? Are you studying less? Do you feel like you're not making progress? And if you say yes to these questions, then you can work on boosting your motivation to help you keep going. How do you boost your motivation? Well, do you remember anchor points? Anchor points are things that connect you or anchor you to your goal, such as a language class or a program. It could even be relatives or friends who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, or an upcoming trip to the target country. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you're watching a TV show in your target language, then it's natural for you to want to understand it better and your desire to learn goes up. If you're taking language classes where a teacher expects homework from you, that's another connection to the language. So you do the homework, you attend classes, you learn more. Ultimately, if you want to boost your motivation and keep going, you should get more anchor points. But how do you do that? Let's jump into the second part. Two, how to review your progress and maintain motivation. How do you review your progress? First, you always set small, measurable goals and always track results. The study resource you're using can be used for your review as well. It's easy to get demotivated and think that you've learned nothing. But if you're using a textbook, for example, you can set a number of pages and that can be a really good motivator, something to reach for. Making sure you're getting through and then testing yourself on material is a little harder if you're not actually using your textbook though. So make sure that you actually stick to the plan you set for yourself. Again, the tool you're using is not so important, but just make sure whatever you use, you measure it and track your progress. Reviewing is as simple as looking at your past goals and results. You can also do it the old school way and look through your notebooks, see how much you've written out. In fact, we have something called the Dean's Date with our Premium Plus plan, where our Premium Plus users send in all of the work they've completed with their teacher. The writings, the recordings, the assignments, and you can see it all, everything that you've done. Then you can see your actual results of your three months of work. Everything you've accomplished is in one place. Do you ever run out of motivation? Of course you do occasionally, and it's natural for everyone's motivation to dip after some time. Then if you lose motivation, how do you keep going? Just as we talked about earlier, add more anchor points, more connections to the language, whether that means enrolling in in-person classes at a real language school, planning trips, or signing up for a test. Those anchor points help you stay motivated. Your main ones need to be things that will keep you interested in your target language or the people in your life connected to it. These are the things that will keep you motivated. But it's also important to remember, whether you're struggling or you're progressing rapidly, that you have to keep your learning adaptive. As humans, we are adaptive. We adapt to environments, and this is the same thing. Your language learning path has to adapt as you progress. If you're progressing faster, there's a way to adapt. If you're progressing slower, there's also a way to adapt. Three, how you can keep going past the halfway point. If you've been studying the language for a few months, it's normal to start losing steam. If you're not losing steam and you're progressing, then great job, and maybe you can share some of your tips with us because it's one of the hardest things ever to stay motivated long term. If you are starting to lose steam, remember that this happens with any goal. It can happen to anyone at any time, so you need to learn how to adapt to it. By being aware that these dips are natural and that they happen, you can expect them. So when one does come around, you'll know how to boost your motivation and know how to keep yourself going. Here's what you do when a dip does come around. 
One, review your learning progress. If you've been setting small, measurable goals every month, then this won't be a problem. The goal here is to see how far you've come, and this will help you maintain motivation. If you can see that you learned 50 words in January, 50 in February, 100 in March, and so on, then you have measurable progress. And this lets you know that you're improving, even when you don't feel like you are. Second, if you're a Premium Plus student, you can also participate in the Dean's Date and submit your work on the deadline. Be sure to ask your Premium Plus teacher about it. Third, if you're a Premium or Premium Plus user, you can also check your dashboard and see how many flashcards you've studied and how many lessons you've completed. We track your progress for you. But of course, it's best to set goals like learn 50 words or speak one minute of conversation because completing a lesson may not mean that you've mastered everything inside. So if you've not been setting goals and tracking them, now is the time to start. Otherwise, do you know how much of the language you can speak or how many words you've learned? If you don't know, then you'll feel like you're floating around and not learning anything. So be sure to set small, measurable monthly goals. Fourth, create more anchor points to boost your motivation. Anchor points are connections to the language that keep you anchored to the language and your goal. It could be friends or relatives who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, an upcoming trip to the target country, language classes, or language programs. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you started learning a language because your relative speaks it, that motivation may not last forever. It may help you in month one or month two, but by month four, five, or six, your motivation might wear off. But you can decide to enroll in a class or start watching a TV show in that language. That will give you some new reasons to keep going to the language. In a way, you give yourself more reasons to learn. A lot of the time, the reasons why we start something are not often the reasons why we continue them. So don't be afraid to adjust your motivations as you go along. If you've reached a language milestone and are starting to feel a little less motivated, just take a look at these tips. Thorough review, setting anchor points, and reviewing your study methods will all help you keep going in your studies. For more strategies on how to keep studying, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.